Hi, everybody. Um, so what we did was compare different results from previous studies that were published uh, about greenhouse gas emissions through life cycle assessment um, about manure management for beef feedlot productions. So uh, we did this to understand the different systems hotspots when you're when you have like different functionalities for manure management. So um, for this, we gathered uh, 14 studies that accounted for 19 scenarios. And we, to enable a comparison, we followed the two criteria. Uh, one was that manure had to be collected from intensive feedlot facilities. And the other one was that the results had to at least report global warming potential. Um, in order to categorize these emissions, we established four manure management stages. So the first one was feedlot, the second transport, then storage and or transformation, and use or disposal. So uh, we identified which articles did report emissions from all those four stages and the global emissions for all the manure management system. And then after that, we made a conversion. You know, um, this, this life cycle assessment studies had different functional units. So in order to be compared, we have to standardize the functional unit. And we chose one ton of manure in dry basis. So all, our result, all the results are reported in one ton, one ton of manure dry basis. Um, in this, let me zoom in. Okay, so in our, on our table, you can see our references, um, the total emission amounts, and then on which of these studies they did report all four manure management stages, which we had only a 21% of our studies to report all of these stages. And then on our graph, we can visualize the standardized results where the C is for compost, and then we have energetic uh, resource, fertilizers, or stockpile. So these are like the four functionalities that we found. And you'll observe that the, the most emissions and the least emissions both come from the energetic production. So this is because in most of the times in here, actually, um, 10 out of the 12 scenarios that produced energetic, energetic based manure, um, they used environmental credits. So emissions were actually negative because of this environmental credits. Um, on the other part, we have that there's only one case for composting and one case for stockpiling reported, which um, shows that the trends are more to energetic production. Not just because of manure management, but also because in search of, oh, I, I stopped sharing in search of um, more renewable energetic resources. So um, in this review, um, we found also that the, the differences between emissions can be as great as 4,000, um, as 4,000 times each result within the biggest one. So um, this extreme variety variety of results is due to the fact that we have very different system boundaries, emission factors, and environmental credits amongst every study. So um, there are some studies that just consider the transformation part, when, where there are others that are since the feed production towards disposal, and that gives us like a very wide limit uh, to assess emissions.
Other than that, we can say that we have references that report that the main emissions and the main emission sources from this manure management processes are from transportation or from storage building. Uh, you know, like the building actually. So since these are very important emission sources in the studies that actually take them into account, it shows that we shouldn't leave aside this kind of emission sources when having like a global system evaluation because these are, are important hotspots to be considered. So um, our plans for the future are to conduct, we are, we're actually conducting an a uh, life cycle assessment in, in beef feedlot manure management facilities, which are oriented towards composting and stockpiling exclusively. 